It's time to live, die, repeat. Talk. What up, viewers? What up? What up? Calc Soups here, and today is Friday, September 17th, and that means it's time for a quick recap of the week in video game news. As I referenced in my cold open, uh, Deathloop is finally here after being delayed from May. We finally got our hands on, on Deathloop this week. I launched uh, to pretty good uh, response. It's currently sitting at an 88 Metacritic. Um, and I've seen a lot of 5 out of 5s and 10 out of 10s across the reviews, so uh, I've got fingers crossed that it will be a good one. Um, I've been excited for this game for quite some time. Um, it's, it's kind of was one of my goatee contenders, and I think a lot of the reviews are saying that this year. It'll also be my first arcane game. I didn't get too much into the Dishonored games, so it'll be really interesting to, to kind of see what's there. I've heard really good things. I've read a couple really good reviews talking about new mechanics and, and just kind of the crazy stuff that, that goes in it. I typically don't like potentially like roguelikes or something like that or roguelites. Um, just the constant, the constant progression doesn't really ever it always kind of frustrates me at some point, but I'm hoping that this one will kind of live up to that and, and the first person shooting uh, and special powers will kind of give me somewhat of a Bioshock, um, kind of a Bioshock feel, so that should hopefully keep me going. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to play it. I haven't touched it yet, but uh, I'm looking forward to jumping in and living, dying, and repeating sometime soon. Also launching this week, we had a giant or the biggest content update that Valheim has had, Valheim being the survival, uh, the Viking survival game that came out back in April. Uh, Hearth and Home came out this week. Uh, it adds a bunch of new features like diverse food and new biomes for you to explore. Um, there was also a, besides the, the big update, there was also a developer fireside chat this week. Um, and in it, they talked about how, you know, people who've, played to the upper ends, will probably look to either reset their world or even their character. Um, I'm I'm still a little hesitant of whether or not I will reset my character. I put a lot of time and effort into getting my character as high as they are. Um, but resetting the world uh, just to, to make sure that you can have a fresh slate, I think that I think that's pretty cool. And I've already started to see some of the, the cool new things that you can do in Valheim, so I'm looking forward to diving into that sometime soon. A game that I didn't know was happening because I apparently forgot about it um, was uh, got, got a character trailer this week. Um, Star Wars Hunters is a mobile battle arena that is coming to mobile phones and Switch, I believe. Um, had a character trailer this week sh kind of showing off the eight cool characters, uh, one of which was my favorite was a uh, robot uh, named J3D1 which I think is a great kind of Jedi reference. And he actually, the character is a, a Jedi. But um, so uh, when I was looking into this, uh, apparently it was announced back in February at a Nintendo Direct, which I don't remember at all. Um, but now they've announced the characters that are going to be in it and a timing window. So it's going to come uh, next year in 2022. So uh, if you're looking for a mobile Star Wars game to be playing, uh, I'll have a link down below so you can check out that latest trailer. There's also a Switch update this week, uh, which I thought was kind of interesting, that, that enabled Bluetooth audio connections. So you can now potentially, blue I haven't tried it yet, but you can now potentially, um, you can now potentially connect Bluetooth headphones to the Switch without any peripherals or anything, which um, I would have thought that would have required something more than just a, an update, but uh, very interesting to see. Um, you still have no mic control, so if your headphones have a mic connection, then you won't be able to, uh, you still won't be able to talk to your friends through that way, which Nintendo still hasn't figured out, considering we want to be able to play Switch games and talk to our friends in some kind of party system, but um, Nintendo either won't or hasn't done that yet. So, uh, But now, there's no peripheral needed, you can just Bluetooth connect your headphones. So um, that'd be a good way to, to keep all the cords because when I play with my Switch, there are definitely a lot of cords flying around everywhere that I, uh, I don't necessarily want or need. So uh, now I can just connect Bluetooth headphones. There's also a noticeable amount of game delays this week, or at least a couple, uh, which I noticed. Um, Battlefield 2042 has been delayed, um, throwing away all of the kind of benefits that it's had going for it. 
I really had kind of uh, high hopes and uh, for 2040, uh, 2042, you know, I think they've hit the market first. They've been talking the most and they have had a really good, strong uh, foundation and marketing campaign. Um, they were coming out before Call of Duty, uh, but now that they've been delayed, they are falling several weeks after Call of Duty, uh, moving from October 22nd to November 19th. So a couple weeks after Call of Duty now, um, you know, I know that 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 things are hard during uh, COVID and, and bug squashing at the end always takes up a lot of time. So hopefully we get a better product uh, with 2042 getting pushed back a couple weeks. But uh, I was really hoping that it would hit before Call of Duty. I don't know that, that I don't know what I was actually hoping for because Call of Duty is still going to be the most selling game, at, you know, of all time as soon as it comes out, uh, all that kind of stuff. But um, I'm I was just kind of hoping that Battlefield could could kind of capitalize on the chink in in, um, in Call of Duty's armor. But um, yeah, we'll still see when it launches on November nineteenth. Speaking of game delays, and this one you kind of saw coming a little bit more, uh, Dying Light 2 has been delayed out of the year uh, with several delays or lack of information prior to its launch. It's presumed to launch in December, on December 7th. Um, it was kind of, I think it was kind of somewhat tentative or inevitable uh, for it to fall out of the year, um, but it is uh, going to be launching February 5th. 22 so just like eight more weeks uh after it was gonna initially launch and, and we'll be able to play dying light 2 so anybody who was looking to parkour their way through the zombie apocalypse is gonna have to wait just a little bit longer remedy talked about the alan wake remaster this week but not in a way you, that you might think um they now that they have the freedom to go back and change some things about alan wake they're going in and they're scrubbing a strange relic of a bygone era, uh, the product placements in Alan Wake. Uh, I think this is a little bit of a... Product placements were actually pretty popular in... or I don't know if popular, but they were noticeable in games circa, you know, the late aughts to the early 2010s. Um, I think Saints Row 3 had a bunch of product placement. Alan Wake had was littered with them. There was like Energizer batteries and Verizon posters and i think some of the drinks were it was like coke or pepsi um so now that they have the full freedom now the remedy has the full freedom to go back and kind of scrub some of that stuff they're scrubbing all the product placements out so uh that should be fun uh you won't have any of that kind of uh weird product placement and video game thing that uh that i think always makes some gamers the the hairs on gamers neck stand up a little bit but that'll be all gone in the alan wake remaster coming out in just a couple weeks Ikea is finally taking gaming seriously, and as someone who is constantly looking for gaming furniture or a new desk or anything like that, uh, and not finding it at Ikea, I've always scratched my head. Well, now I don't have to, I'd have to look no further, because Ikea is actually making a gaming, uh, gaming-related furniture uh, line, so we will now be able to get... I, I can't wait for the Ikea stores to have kind of like gaming set up, just to see kind of how what they think of as... As like a gaming setup but it should be really cool there's like 30 or so products all with the weird ikea names that you know and love um but you know there will be desks and head pillows and ring lights and all that kind of stuff that you can get for ikea from ikea so i think that's actually uh i think this is actually a pretty good match i think that ikea's should have been kind of open to this for quite some time but um you know as someone who has wandered through ikea's office space trying to figure out what my what my layout's going to be for my desk situation. Um, the fact that they are now kind of targeting more towards gamers, I think should be really, really cool and helpful. So excited to see that. Also launching this week was Origami 2. This is a game I am, uh, I've been excited about for quite some time, and I think I've talked about this uh, before. Uh, Origami is a stealth co-op action game. Uh, I really, emphasis on the co-op, I really wanted to play this game with my partner in crime, my wife, uh, for quite some time, and now that the second one's out, and you can play up to three players, uh, I'm really much, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I think the kind of stealth co-op is as something that hasn't been really explored very much, um, and I think that that this would be a perfect game to kind of get into that if you have uh, that special someone in your life. 
Last but certainly not least, got a whiff of Darkest Dungeon news this week, so I've got to talk about it. Uh, Darkest Dungeon 2 um, is having an early access period later in October. On October 26th is when it's starting up, and that will be coming exclusively to the, ep uh, the Epic Game Store, unfortunately. Um, I don't know if this exclusivity actually rolls over to the actual game, whether or not the game will launch exclusively on Epic, or at least PC exclusively, or if it's a timed exclusive, but... Uh, I'm looking forward to playing Darkest Dungeon sometime soon, so hopefully I can check out that early access later in October. That's it for the week. If there's anything you think I missed, feel free to comment down below and tell me about it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you do, follow, like, and subscribe to me on YouTube and Twitch. You can see more great content like this. I'll have links down below in the description. Thanks again. I hope you have a super day. I hope you have a super weekend. I hope you have a super day. Bye!